Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that. I'm trying to let some more of y'all in. My name is Desire Spurgeon. I'm the college advisor at Dudley High School. And just to start you all off, I'm going to introduce my other um, co-workers, Jesse, who is also a college advisor, Jesse, Miss Lutz, because um, we have two Jessies on presenting or um, representing with us tonight. And then I, we also have Frank. Adams um, and Miss Alexis Baker, who are also college advisors in the Guilford County, County area. And then we have Miss Tequila Hall on with us tonight representing CFNC. Um, and if you've been around with us through our other kickout um, series, you have met some of our other community partners with um, being Say Yes Guilford and um, Dr. Clinton Wilson, who is the supervisor of counseling, um, high school counseling in Gifford County. So those are pretty much all of our partners that we typically introduce. I don't have a slide of them for y'all tonight, but um, their names should serve them well at this point. Um, just a few things to mention before we go ahead and get started with the webinar is to remember our webinar etiquette. If you've been here before, you may remember it, but if this is your first time, please just remember to mute yourself upon entry. I know the host should be muting some of you all, but if you're not muted and you're just coming in, that's all right. Just mute yourself so that you can hear the presenters. Um, and if you have any questions, just drop those in the chat. We will be sure to get to those after the presentation. Um, and some of us will also be monitoring the chat throughout. So we may be able to send you a short little um, response through the chat as well. But if not, no worries, just wait to the end of the webinar and we will get back to you with a response. Um, and if you just don't abide by our webinar etiquette, such as you know unmuting yourself or doing anything inappropriate on the webinar, we will have to kick you out of the webinar, unfortunately. And that is pretty much it. Thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. Again, uh, we are just about through the semester, y'all. If y'all are seniors, I know this is the exciting point, really the heart wrenching point. Like you know, you're getting all of those awards back and everything like that. So. Um, if you um, haven't started any of that, no worries. That is why we are on here tonight to share another pathway with you. Um, for my school in particular, like honestly, I treat community college just like any other college. I don't usually, you know, reserve it as a kind of last resort. And it may be because of my own story, which I'm going to share with you in just a few seconds. But I treat community college, um, the process just like any other college um, because there are many benefits to it. Um, and community colleges typically, especially in North Carolina, are very transfer friendly for a lot of those public institutions, which Jesse will go and speak about later on. But let's go ahead and get into my story because I'm so passionate about this um, since I lived through it. Um, and I wanna share that with you all tonight. So again, I'm Desire Spurgeon, and this is my story about how community college, um, how I went from community college to UNC um, Chapel Hill and why this was the perfect choice for me. So just coming through my home life, growing up, I was raised by a single mom. There was really no educational ambition whatsoever in my household. No one had ever been to college. No one had ever mentioned college. Like it wasn't even like an idea in my house. Like nobody really cared. Um, we were low income, low resources. Um, so that just give, you know, frames the mindset and the idea. Like it was just Pretty much a culture of no hope for anything in my house like just to give you a better idea of it like my brother actually dropped out of high school didn't finish he's the oldest of us four so that was our you know first example there brother didn't graduate my older sister got pregnant before she graduated high school so she barely graduated and then i'm the third child so it was kind of up to me to like make my own path from there and it was like okay well what do i do just stay home just you know i was working at a fast food job at that time since i was 16 so i was like you know do i stay here what do I do? So um, from there, I kind of honestly just went to, like I did very well in high school. This is a little bit about my high school. It was a title one school, very low resourced. Um, there was also no college culture in my school at all. So that just made it even worse because I didn't have college culture at home. But when I got to school, there was no college culture there either. Um, I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is really like a military town. So the school that I went to was literally the lowest ranked school in the district. So they, they really didn't care much. I mean, the graduation rates were horrible as is. So there was really no time to kind of wiggle in college on top of low graduation rates. So it was kind of like if you graduated, you just went to the military if you didn't want to stay pretty much in the streets. Um, so I went there and I was actually a high flyer, y'all. Like, honestly, school was my, my jam. Like, I was top of the class and everything like that, but I still had no plan after I graduated. 
Um, I was just planning to work. Um, the only thing I had really heard just through the grapevine um, in passing at high school about college was that a lot of people went into debt because of it, you know, and I was like, well, I'm already broke. Why would I want to be broke with it? So I was like, I'd rather just stay home and work at my fast food job. At least I don't have any debt. Like I can be poor and just work. So um, that was the big thing to me. But um, with my home situation, like I knew I didn't want to just stay there and my fast food job making minimum wage really was not going to support my life. So I was like, you know what, why not go to community college on a whim? Um, I had spoken to my counselor and she was like, well, you know, you need, really need a plan, something to do. And I was like, well, I'll just plan to work. And she was like, well, what about community college just to give you another option? And what if you can go for free? We'll see about getting you a scholarship. So um, basically I got a scholarship to go to community college. Like it came very end of the year. Like I did all this stuff in May, y'all. I was a very last minute, like about to walk out the door when I applied to community college and to that scholarship. Like I didn't even know about FAFSA at this point. I had never even heard of FAFSA and I'll get to how I learned about FAFSA in a minute. But I didn't even know about FAFSA, which with my family's income, I would have been qualified for the maximum amount, which I was. Um, but no one had talked to me about that. That's just how low of a college culture my family and school had. I didn't even know about FAFSA when I graduated. So it was just it was just a hot mess all around, and which is why these schools need college advisors, basically, because I was completely on my own with this. Um, so I ended up just going to community college on a whim, so I didn't have to stay home pretty much and just you know, resort to that lifestyle or, you know, what I was raised up in for the rest of my life. Um, so this is how my path came to be, you know, went to community college on a whim, you know, they, it was like really cheap, the cheapest thing you could do. I also heard about C, the C-STEP program, which is a um, pretty much partner program. You do two years at the community college and then you do, you know, you get guaranteed admission into UNC Chapel Hill and you do your remaining two years at Chapel Hill to complete your bachelor's degree. So I found out about this program. I was like, okay, cool. This will at least set me up because I, I knew nothing about college at this point. I hadn't even ever been on a college tour before. Like we have one public university in Fayetteville and I had never even been to that. Okay. So I just want to further let y'all know how like clueless I was. Never even toured a college. So um, FTCC is the one I went to. That's the first college I had stepped foot on. And, you know, um, the C-STEP advisor I was paired with, like she gave me everything I needed to know. She's the one who told me about FAFSA. Like when my application came in and she was setting me up because she did pick my classes for me. Um, for my first year, well, all my years at the community college, I didn't have to do nothing like she, she was the bomb. But um, she went and she saw my record and she said, hey, you haven't done your fast. And I'm like, well, what is that? And she said, that's how you're going to get some money to go to school. And she was like, how are you going to pay for your classes? So it was like July, y'all. And she's telling me like, I need to do my FAFSA. And I had a zero. I didn't, I didn't know any of this. So um, luckily, like the scholarship that I had applied for, I got it and it came back just in time to cover my first semester classes because my FAFSA had not processed by the time classes started. So I would have to like, my whole first semester was about to be gone because I didn't have no money to pay for it. So my scholarship literally came in at the nick of time. And then by the time my FAFSA processed like later on in the semester and I was able to get that money back as a refund, but my scholarship was just enough to cover everything I needed. So I was able to still go. So if you don't know about FAFSA and all that stuff, please, you know, you're hearing it from me now, please go ahead and do it so you're not in my situation or my case where you just don't know what is going on um, when you get to community college. But in that program, like she set me up, this gave me an opportunity to really learn what I didn't know about college. It gave me that college foundation. Like if I would have went to a four year straight out of high school, I wouldn't have known like what to do. I wouldn't have been prepared at all, y'all. Like just being honest, because I was so clueless. So community college and going through this program in particular and getting paired with an advisor really helped me. Like I got to know my resources. I became a college ambassador, like at the um, community college level. I began to build rapport with my teachers. She taught me how to do a study plan. This picture here is a bunch of my friends who were in the C-STEP program with me. All of us, we did study groups together. Like y'all, I came out of community college with a 4.0, like 4.0 perfect college GPA from a person who knew nothing about college. Like I knew absolutely nothing. And to come here and be paired with their resources to get that foundation was exactly what I needed. Like I said, if I would have went to a university and had to figure out life on my own, I would have been struggling for real. I probably would not have made it through undergrad um, if I wouldn't have gone to community college first. 
Um, but that was just something. So that was for my first two years. The second two years, I was at UNC Chapel Hill. So by this point, y'all, I was already connected with um, some advisors at Chapel Hill because they used to come down since we were in the C-STEP program. They used to come visit us. I was acclimated to UNC Chapel Hill's campus because the perk of being in C-STEP is they took us on trips to Chapel Hill throughout the semester um, that they took, they um, prepared transportation for us and everything and took us as a group so we can tour the campus. So by the time we transferred up there, I knew what I was doing. I knew where I was going. It felt like I was already a student there. So it was it was really cool, like a really a seamless transition. Like it, it was perfect. I also graduated debt free. So that's another thing. Um, so for my first two years at the community college, once my FAFSA came through and I got a bunch of scholarships, I was good to go. I had a surplus had more than I even needed. Um, and then when I got to Chapel Hill, I was also able to be there debt free because I knew more about scholarships at that point. I knew about my FAFSA at that point. I just knew everything I didn't know coming out of high school by the time it was time for me to go to Chapel Hill. And I was just all around more prepared, y'all. It taught, like, again, this taught me how to network. This taught me how to build rapport with my professors, how to do study groups, how to manage my time. Like, I still worked the job. Like, I was working, like, 25 to 30 hours a week still while I was in college. So by the time I got to UNC, like, I didn't have to work because I was good to go. I was, you know, um, they covered everything for me. But I worked and did research because I wanted to because I had the time to. And I was able to balance my schedule at that point. So those are just some, some things that happened along my path. And then um, I know a lot of the times what I get from some of my community college students who are transferring, they feel like they're going to miss out from the college experience um, going to a four year university. And I just wanted to share that that's not the case at all. Like, like I said, when I transferred, I was really just more prepared overall academically, but not just academically. I was prepared to know how to seek out my opportunities and resources. So these are some of the pictures of the things I got to do while at UNC Chapel Hill, including going to basketball games, just like any other UNC student. Um, I also got a free trip to Puerto Rico when I went to Chapel Hill. Um, this was a week trip during my spring break, just to give me some um, experience in another country since I hadn't had none um, before. So these were some really cool things that I got to take advantage of because I knew how to seek out my resources by the time I got there. Um, extracurriculars, I was member a member in a few clubs on campus, um, so was able to do those just fine. I did research for two years at the UNC Medical School, and like by the time I transferred up there, a lot of my friends who had been there since their freshman year at UNC Chapel Hill, they were like, how did you get that research position? Like, can you help me? And I'm like, that was just so crazy to me because I was a transfer student here helping students who had been there all pretty much all the years since their freshman year at UNC, helping them to work the system. Like they didn't even know about some of these opportunities and I was helping students who were there before me. So that was pretty cool um, just to note that. Um, and yeah, like I said, everything I did at community college, I was just able to take it there with me to Chapel Hill and use those experience and find my experiences and resources there. Um, and this is just a few little research I did about community college. So if you look to the left here, community college transfer students net impressive graduation rates. So this is something that a lot of people don't know about because community colleges are typically looked down upon, but community college students actually have, or community college transfer students actually have the best graduation rates out of anybody. So if you look down at the bottom below, 75% of community college transfer students graduate from selected four-year institutions compared to only 73% of students who enroll directly out of high school to a four-year institution and only 61% of students who go to a four-year straight out of high school and transfer to another four-year graduate. And this is within four to six years. So community college transfers, y'all, we got the best graduation rates. I think that's why North Carolina is, you know, doing their thing with making sure community college transfer students have a seamless pathway. Oh, and another thing to mention is every single last one of my community college credits, which I had between, I think I had about 60, 62 credits, every one of them transferred. They took every single class. So by the time I got to Chapel Hill, all I had to do was my major. I had so much free time, I picked up a minor because I just had that space in my schedule to just work around, you know, with my classes since all of that stuff transferred for me. I didn't have to argue anything or anything like that. They took everything from the community college. And these are some just celebrities on the right who went to community college and still were, you know, successful. And then this is just something I wanted to mention to y'all again, just from seeing how I started and my life story from coming from pretty much just no educational ambition to graduating. I actually graduated from Carolina with distinction. I graduated from community college with um, presidential on the president's list basically or highest honors. So your past and your present does not have to define you. So if you didn't do well in high school or if you are completely clueless about college right now, just hope for your future. Just hope that it can be done, you know, it, 
you can start at community college and definitely still make something of yourself like your pathway or whatever is going on in your life right now does not mean you know that's the end or that's the be all say all for you you can still make something of yourself and community college can definitely help you um, figure out that path at a more or a less risk you know risky situation for you because again cheapest option for me was community college especially if you have great need or even if you don't have great need they are still the most affordable option either way it goes so um, that's pretty much it, y'all. That is my story, and I hope it has touched some of y'all today and helped you to just consider community college. That was so great, uh, Desire. I absolutely uh, love your story. Thank you. That was just great. Um, so, guys, we're going to get ready to prepare for our next uh, presenter. Uh, he is amazing. Um, his name is Jesse Cross, and he is the Director of Admissions and Recruitment at GTCC. So I'm going to let him actually uh, go ahead and, you know, uh, present. He has an amazing presentation. I'm excited that he's able to join. And as you have questions, please make sure you're putting your questions in the chat, and we'll definitely allow enough time for Q&A at the end. All right, Jesse. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I totally should have made Desire go second because I don't know if I can follow that up. That was that was pretty solid. So everything she said, spot on. Um, we're going to get a little bit more detailed. Um, and right now, uh, you're getting introduced to our new tagline, our new marketing pitch, um, GTCC, make amazing happen. And I think you can hear from Desire's words, <clears throat> that's 100% true. Um, you can really do some things at Guilford Tech. Main stuff about GTCC, we're a two-year accredited school. Uh, regional accreditation means credits transfer not only in North Carolina, but all over the country. It's recognized as the, the most um, transferable accreditation is regional accreditation. We offer certificates, diplomas, and degrees. Uh, our highest degree is a two-year degree. That's the highest community colleges do in North Carolina. We have locations all over Guilford County, uh, Greensboro, High Point, out by the airport, past the airport in Oak Ridge. Unless you live in Colfax, then it's in Colfax. Um, so all over the county, different things at different places, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we're big. We've got about 11,000 students. Um, and that's kind of spread out between all the campuses. The biggest campus is here in Jamestown. That's where you're going to find the most resources, the most programs. But we try to make all the campuses equitable. So people are getting similar types of access to library services, counseling, all those things, no matter where you are in Guilford County. And we are the fourth biggest community college in North Carolina, <clears throat> depending on our friends down at uh, Fayetteville Tech, if, if a lot of troops are deployed, we jump up to third. If a lot of troops are back, we fall down to fourth. So we're, we're right about the same experience that Desire had down there in Fayetteville. <clears throat> when we have, when we talk about community college, basically there's two things that people do. Um, we're, we're almost split at Guilford Tech half and half. Half of our students are college transfer. Half of our students are technical. So I'm gonna talk about kind of what college transfer means for a second. Then we'll kind of generically talk about what technical means. So in college transfer, um, your degrees are kind of spread on this spectrum, right? So way over here on the science -y side, you've got a, your degrees in science, engineering, chemistry, biology, pre-med, Way over here on the other side, we've got your art, dance, music, uh, theater. Those are all associate, or those are all fine arts degrees. Everybody else is kind of in the middle. Education, history, eh, business um, are all in what was considered the arts. So our students either choose that they're gonna be associate in arts because they wanna do something in education or just not sciencey. Um, or they're definitely on an engineering pathway or something like that. So they're over an associate in science or they're very artistic and then they're associate in fine arts. 
we do specifically have a degree for students who want to transfer to Charlotte, um, NC State, or A&T Associate in Engineering to make sure that those students are really getting all the calculus and physics um, that they need. Um, and then we're also a C-STEP partner with uh, Chapel Hill. So the same experience that Desire had at, at FTCC can happen here at Guilford Tech as well. So if it's your, your mission in life to end up in Chapel Hill, you know, you can be in C-STEP. Now, as far as technical, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, some of our certificates are very short, uh, might be one year, and you just learn a very small segment of a profession, um, kind of get you in the door type of thing. A lot of time for students, I encourage that certificates are really for adult learners that come back that want to enhance their skills. They might already have a degree, but they need to learn something new. If you are straight out of high school, this is your first job, a certificate most likely is not getting it, or you're not going to be making a whole lot of money. Diplomas, um, some of our very popular uh, programs are diplomas, uh, cosmetology, dental assisting, uh, diesel mechanic. Um, those all, the students come out making a very good wage. There's high demand for jobs, but because of the nature of that work, they don't require a full degree. So they're usually just one-year diplomas, um, three semesters, a little bit of general coursework, but mostly technical. Then we've got all our two-year programs. Uh, at Guilford Tech, we've got almost 80 different programs and they're all over the place. So we'll talk about our different offerings in a little bit. But when you're talking about community college, you can really either do one of two things. You can either gear up so you can do that easy transfer to university, or you can do something hands-on that's gonna get you out there working and making a, making a livable wage. Now, our co-admission programs go past C-STEP. So, you know, yeah, C-STEP's popular, um, and that's with Chapel Hill. But we also have programs with UNCG where the students um, can transfer directly to UNCG as a junior in psychology, business, biology, and drama. So you take 20 classes, 21 classes at Guilford Tech, you're a full-time student, you get an advisor from UNCG, you're in a group, um, and that group is kind of your, your cohort. You float through our system, you go visit UNCG, you can go to the sports, you can use all their different uh, student services over there, but you're paying Guilford Tech tuition. I will talk about tuition a little bit later. So if your intent is to go to UNCG in one of those majors and you want to be a full-time student, uh, great programs. Um, at a and we've got mechanical and civil engineering, same concept as the UNCG programs. Uh, you come here for two years. Your first year, you're completely on campus at Guilford Tech. Your second year, you start integrating with the engineering program at, at a and <clears throat> One that we didn't get in a slideshow, we have the same type of thing with a and for nursing. It's called the Ribbon, uh, Regionally Increasing Bachelor's Nurses. So you're a full-time student at Guilford Tech for actually three years in that one. Become an RN at the end of the third year and finish your BSN at A&T that, that last year. So that's another special program. When we say cohort, when we say small, when we say selective, there's gonna be some criteria. So for us, a minimum criteria for these kind of two plus programs or these co-enrollment programs, gotta come out of high school with an unweighted 3.0 um, and you have to agree to be full-time with us because the whole intent is if you're full-time, if you're on track, we're gonna get you graduated in four years. We're not doing five, we're not doing six. If this is your mission, we're gonna get you graduated in four. And that, that's kind of a, it's harder than you might think sometimes. So you've got any questions about any of those, um, we've got the email there for co-admission uh, co programs. You can hit them up for more information. Uh, you can always hit up, uh, I'll put our info in the chat box in a little bit. Um, but you can hit up that one. 
I'm sure this presentation will be available. It's being recorded, so I'm sure you'll be able to see it after it's after it's done. So you can slide through it again. All right. Some of our most popular programs are what are considered limited enrollment programs, and we get questions about these a whole lot because they are high demand as far as jobs. They're high demand as far as uh, how much students make when they come out, um, and Anything in the healthcare, you know, you've got job security for quite some time. Uh, if you haven't heard, there's like a global pandemic, so like nursing's good. Um, but you know, these programs, because there's such high demand, they've got probably the most um, requirements up front. Uh, Guilford Tech is the North Carolina Community College system. We're considered open door. Open door means. If you're over 18 or a high school graduate, come on. We want to get you something that is going to help you in the workplace, get you out there um, making more than you would with, with no education whatsoever. But, you know, when we've only got about 120 nursing seats a year, we have to have some kind of selection process. So each of these different programs has a little bit different criteria. So if you're interested in radiography, dental, nursing, any of these highly selective, highly um, competitive programs, you definitely want to start looking early um, because some things that you can do in high school are going to um, really uh, make this easier. Nursing. Uh, going through the class when you're a senior, getting your CNA, it's required for nursing. You could have done it in high school. Get it out of the way. So um, juniors, sophomores, juniors, seniors in high school really should be looking at our limited entry stuff. Some of them not so much. Cosmetology, pharmacy tech. If you're college level in English and math and you apply early enough in your senior year, you'll probably still get in for fall. Um, nursing, probably a, a year out. Hygiene, maybe a year, year and a half. So if you're interested in any of these high uh, interest programs, definitely check it out early. To make sure you understand the criteria. Now, we also talk a lot at the community college about gainful employment degrees. And a fancy government term. Um, we, we like big terms that don't mean a whole lot to anybody else. So when we talk about gainful employment, it's like, what do we teach at Guilford Tech that you can go somewhere in Guilford County or the surrounding counties and make a living wage? What are you going to come out of here with, with a one-year uh, vocational diploma, two-year associate degree, and you are going to make money um, and potentially, you know, have a, a career opportunity that, that spans your whole lifetime. Our biggest clusters of gainful employment degrees at Guilford Tech fall in Allied Health, which is your nursing, dental hygiene, surge tech, radiography, all of those types of programs. The automotive industry, uh, we have programs, we have general automotive, uh, where you can just be an automotive technician. We have a special program with the Ford Motor Company where you become a dealership mechanic for Ford. Um, uh, if you've ever had your car worked on, you know those folks make a little bit of cash. Uh, we have collision repair, where you learn all the body work and um, the paint skills. And the, the better you are at that, you just you write your own paycheck on that deal. Uh, aviation is huge in Guilford County. Uh, it's such a growth industry. Um, all throughout any economic downturn we've had, we've never seen funding drop for aviation. Keep getting grants, we keep getting equipment, we keep getting support from the industry because they want our graduates. It's not uncommon for people to graduate from aviation systems with you know, an entry level job making you know, $35 an hour. Um, and that's, that's not bad for a two year program. Um, logistics is huge. Uh, Guilford County, the old you know slogan is the gate city. It, it's becoming more evident all the time. We've got FedEx, we've got Amazon, we've got 47 different uh, interstates, we've got trains, there's a harbor down east. Um, 
everything flows through Guilford County. And there's lots of companies that support that logistics in industry. So our supply chain management cranks out students to get jobs, uh, just bang, bang, bang. Uh, anything in IT, I think right now we're sitting at about seven different IT degrees, everything from security to programming, networking, uh, computer app or uh, web app, uh, blah, 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 mobile phone app development, um, cybercrime, uh, learning criminal investigation using IT. So all of those different things come from our IT department. Uh, right next, you know, I, I can't see it because it's a quarter mile from here, but our new facility uh, used to be the old Thomasville bus plant. It's got a great machining and CNC uh, shop. It, it's huge. Um, there is so much call for integrated manufacturing in Guilford County and the surrounding counties. Anybody that can run uh, a big Haas, uh, you know, 30 tool, seven plane milling machine is going to get a job and going to get paid. Uh, welding, which is right next door to that shop. Also, we've got 70 booths. Uh, I just walked by there today. We now have a plasma art cutting table. Um, so the students are, and we've got four or five robot welders in there. The students coming out of these welding programs are really just getting the top notch instruction to where they can go out and make, you know, unlimited. You do one semester and do MIG welding, you can go make $12, $14 an hour. Uh, if you'll climb up a skyscraper and hang upside down and weld girders, you know, write your own check. Um, and then a lot of our things in, we've got lots of things in construction, but the one that hits, it's, you know, kind of the high end of the, the pay scales, HVAC. Uh, when it's cold, we need heat. And uh, North Carolina in the summer, it would be unbearable uh, for this former Minnesotan without AC. So, you know, there's never gonna be a downturn in the HVAC industry. So those are some of our, our main programs. Haven't talked about all of them, but these are the ones that if you're hands-on, if you're a tactile learner, if you've got people skills, uh, these are, these are gonna definitely make bank. Now, let's, let's pull back and look at the process a little bit. Um, I'm talking about community colleges and why community colleges are, are, are important. Um, but I, I work at the, the best one in North Carolina, so I'm talking about us. But you're going to find the same type of process is going to be if you apply at Alamance or if you apply at uh, one of the other schools around here. There's, there's 58 community colleges in North Carolina. So you've got lots of opportunities, different specialty programs. So, you know, yeah, we're right next door and we make the most sense. But if there's a special program somewhere, you're going to do the same stuff. Um, even if you're just applying to college, you know, the process isn't a whole lot different if you're applying to Chapel Hill straight up. Um, so the first two, um, you know, are pretty, pretty basic. Everybody in North Carolina has to get this magic number called the RCN. It's a, it comes from a, a system called the Residency Determination Service. Uh, it lives over in Raleigh at the College Foundation. And what they do is they are determining whether you pay in-state tuition or out-of-state tuition. This number is crucially important. And when you're filling this out, it's gonna ask you questions about you and your parents. And this system is gonna ask some pretty detailed stuff. Social, driver's license number, are you registered to vote? Don't bluff on any of that stuff because if your residency comes back as out of state, now your tuition is four times what it should be. It's gonna be over $200 of credit instead of 76. To fix that, now you gotta go back to that system, change all your answers, and hope it goes through that time. If it doesn't go through that time, then you gotta appeal. It turns into this multi-week uh, stressor. So uh, residency, super secure. You know, it's in the same computer warehouse where all the FAFSAs for all in North Carolina come through. If your parents are freaking about putting their social security number on a web form, CFI has already got your social if you did a FAFSA, so it's already there. Um, 
uh, I helped build the system. Sometimes when I'd be walking up a hall, I'd have to walk around half the building because I didn't have access to walk through a room. So super secure, but you got to answer those questions. It's going to ask, like I said, it's going to ask social. It's going to ask driver's license stuff. So make sure that you've got your parents handy when you're doing your residency. You can do it at school. Um, it'll save up to as far as you can get, but just make sure you never skip any of that stuff. If you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can't fix it. It just makes it more convoluted. RDS residency and all the community college applications are all in CFNC. So you only need your CFNC account to do residency and to do the admissions out. So when you go to um, our website, gtcc.edu, and you click the word apply at the top, it's going to give you these links um, to go to these sites to fill out your stuff. But the first two, complete residency, complete your application. Um, those are really going to be on CFNC. They just look a little bit different. Uh, the application, that's where it's going to ask, what are you trying to do? What's your major? Now, we're going to list all 80. If you pick the wrong one, it's not the end of the world because we can fix it a little bit later in the process. But, you know, your basic determination at that jump off, are you going to be college transfer? Are you going to be associate arts, associate in science, associate in engineering, associate in fine arts? Or are you technical? So if you're going to be a business student at Chapel Hill, cool. You're still associate arts with us. Don't pick business because that's where students get into a situation where they're taking classes that may or may not transfer. So just remember, if you're college transfer, your intent is to end it the four year, look for all the ones that say associate, associate of arts, psychology, associate of arts, history. If you're not 100% locked in, again, not the end of the world, but that's the separation. If you want one that's just a two year, a one year, you wanna do welding, go find welding. But if you think you're going to UNCG, pick Associate in Arts, pick Associate in Science. Uh, transcripts, super convenient. If you're at a public school in North Carolina and even some of the charters and whatnot, you can request your transcript through CFNC. It's free. Um, all you gotta do is go to the application hub and request a transcript. We get it automatically. Um, now, in the past, there probably would have been a jump off here where we would have talked about placement testing. Uh, there's a new rule in North Carolina in the community college system where if you uh, come to community college within 10 years of high school graduation, we're going to use the unweighted GPA off that transcript to place you. We're not going to worry about you taking a placement test. Uh, go sit you in a room for three hours, see how smart you are. We're going to look at four years of high school. Um, it's a better predictor of success and it works really well. So the way it works, if your unweighted is above a 2.8, your college level, you just go straight in. If you're between a 2.2 and a 2.79, we're gonna let you do college level coursework, but we're gonna put you in a couple little extra study sessions. Uh, we call them um, co-requisites. Uh, really, it's just a couple extra hours of FaceTime with your instructor to make sure you're really nailing English and math. If you come out of four years of high school and you're, you're rocking a, a, a 2.19 or lower, we really wanna lay hands on you that first semester and make sure you're gonna be okay. So we're gonna put you in some preparatory English and math and make sure that you're college level. Now, if that 2.19 was because you just didn't show up, but you're still smart, Cool, busted in English 002 and math 003, you still get to college level in one semester. We've eliminated all that extra uh, remedial developmental stuff that we used to have. It, it really should just be one semester. If you come in and you knock it out of the park, you go straight back to college level in one semester. So um, again, no need for testing. Now, if you're sitting at a 175, and you've got some good SATs or good ACTs, well, bring them, bring that on. We're gonna take that SAT or ACT above your GPA. But truthfully, most of the students 
who are crushing the ACT and the, and the SAT are also sitting on weighted above 2.8. So we don't use the ACT, SAT very much. Uh, this one's crucial. Uh, Desire said it. I'm going to say it. Do a FAFSA. I don't, I don't care if you think you're going to get anything or not. Um, a lot of scholarships nowadays will say, hey, did you do a FAFSA? They don't care if you have need. They don't care if you qualify for the FAFSA. What they're trying to do is make sure you're finding out everything you qualify for. So a lot of time, even to apply for a side scholarship, you gotta have a FAFSA. In Guilford County to do Say Yes Guilford, um, you gotta have a FAFSA. So just do the FAFSA. It, it's, it's getting better all the time. Um, it, it's not as painful as it used to be. They've got, they can suck in your tax information from the IRS, it's, it's pretty slick. So go to fafsa.ed.gov uh, or you can get some information on CFNC. You can always hit our financial aid office for questions. I wanna add one thing to this. We have a ton of scholarship money that we give it out for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We give it out for Guilford County Schools graduates give it for aviation, we give it for nursing. We have one scholarship application for the college. Um, fill out the scholarship application, like seriously. I was, I walked by financial aid the other day and the like scholarship lady was pulling her hair out and I was like, what's up? She's like, ah, oh, I gotta give away $25,000. I can't find any students. Oh, like if people had just do the application, they would have been on Brittany's radar. They probably got an email and said, hey, here's a thousand bucks. Um, so uh, from our homepage, when you click that apply and you follow the financial aid, click that scholarship out. Even if your grades aren't great, we don't care. It's for us, it's more about um, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to get better at. We don't care what you did for the last four years. Just, as long as you graduated and you're here, cool. Uh, let's give you some money to, to make it happen. All right, so once, once you've done the kind of application-y stuff, our application is live for fall right now. Like it opened in October. Uh, you could have been doing this stuff. Uh, the FAFSA has been up, open since October. Could have been doing this stuff. Don't, this one I'm gonna say, don't be like desire. Don't, don't do stuff in May and June. Um, Today we were joking because the lobby was empty. It's advising them. It is spring break, but there was nobody here. When we come to the last week of March, we'll, we'll have to start monitoring the social distancing so we don't have enough chairs. So do stuff early. You're gonna get more of what you want. You're gonna get better schedule. I don't care if it's here, uh, Fayetteville Tech, Wake Tech, UNCG. The earlier you do your stuff, the earlier, the better you're gonna get. So. From the time you apply, approximately two days later, you're gonna be in our system. You can watch the orientation video. It's online, it's a video, you watch it. It gives you some important information about campus, stuff we've got. Um, you, gotta, you gotta have your admissions app in before you do it. Um, after you're done with that, our process of, of seeing an advisor that first semester is called first advising. And as soon as you finish orientation, you're eligible to sign up for that. I don't know where it came from, I guess a long time ago, but there's this like rumor that you have to graduate from high school before you can register. Well, that only is applicable in the spring. Um, so early graduates have to be actually finished before they can register. But for fall, our uh, 2021 graduates can start registering April 12th. So if you've applied, if you've sent in, if we got your transcript, we got your GPA, you've gone through orientation, you've seen an advisor, you can register April 12th. You can be one of the first students of the new students. We get about 4,500, 5,000 every fall. You can be one of the very first ones to register. There's way more classes to, to pick from, more selection of days, times, online, night, face-to-face, -face, whatever. Um, so do your stuff early. You're gonna get a whole lot more uh, bang for your buck on that. Money, 
Um, there's a, a bit of a disparity in, in uh, Guilford County about how much stuff costs. Um, our, our tuition, uh, if, you, if you go six, seven miles up the road, uh, HPU, um, that, that number is a little high. Um, you, you save a whole lot by coming to Guilford Tech. Uh, I will say we're, we're short on hammocks and, and uh, hot tubs, but the tuition savings are incredible. But more realistically, when you look at the, the local universities, the amount of money you pay for the first two years, you save a ton in tuition um, by coming to the community college. And when I talk to our friends in financial aid, just, you know, not a hundred, I can't say this is a hundred percent, but it's pretty right there. If your household income is under 70 grand between, um, North Carolina Community College Grant, the Pell Grant, and the uh, um, Lottery Funds Grant, the tuition's gonna be free. Like, if your household income's under that $70,000 threshold. If it's under that $100,000 threshold and you qualify through Say Yes, your tuition's gonna be free. So you can almost, if you're, if you're living in a household and the household income's under 100 grand, you can basically wipe off that tuition number. Now, there still might be additional costs, books, uh, tools, if you're in welding and stuff like that. But the affordability is just off the charts, um, how much money you can save those first couple of years. And um, it's, it, it is pretty, pretty incredible. And then, you know, the other expenses, um, when you talk about a student at university, uh, you know, pizza ain't free. Uh, most of the time when you're you're uh, doing the community college, you're staying closer to home, probably not going to have rent and all those other things. So you can keep the cost pretty close to that. So super affordable. All right. And then, you know, we talked about the affordability. Um, you know, we, we hit on that. But you, even when you go past that, where if your household income's under hundred grand, basically tuition's gone, you can still get scholarships. You can get um, all different types of uh, um, things from completion by design, um, uh, hospitality, that's anybody in our culinary school. There's uh, high school, high achievers can get um, scholarships, jobs for the future are all those STEM scholarships. Uh, career and College Promise, those are the students that kind of started in high school. So there's lots of things there on um, uh, ways to fund your education above and beyond the, the normal um, financial aid stuff. So it is easy to see how a student who's resilient um, and pays attention and hits stuff on time can come here for free, um, leave completely debt free, move on to university. We've even got some scholarships that chase you to the university. Um, you know, if you're the graduate of distinction, I think you get a thousand dollars a year at UNCG. So, you know, it's lots of money out there. So do some work, hit our financial aid office. Our financial aid office, is not just for our students. Uh, incoming students can come and ask these same kind of questions. How do I apply that kind of thing? So utilize your financial aid office, um, keep, keep banging because there's money somewhere. Uh, Current College Promise, a great program. Uh, we've seen a huge uptick in the participation from Guilford County Schools. This is a program where high school juniors and seniors can take classes on campus or online substitute them out for graduation credits at their school and get guaranteed credit toward graduation. It opens up junior year and goes through the senior year summer. So even graduating seniors can take summer school after they graduate and still get the, the classes for free. So a lot of our Korean College Promise people are in um, college transfer pathway. So you know, they're taking those general ed classes that, you know, Psychology 150, which is general psych transfers to all the universities and is kind of a, a core class for all these programs. 
So they take it to go for tech, they get a sear better, we know it's gonna transfer. Um, if you take AP and you don't get that three on the exam, well, then what'd you do? You, you worked real hard in an AP class, but you don't have any credit. So the huge benefit of Korean College Promise I see is if you do the work in the classroom and you pass the class, you get the credits. They're on your educational credit history forever. Uh, nobody's gonna take those away. Uh, AP, some of those APs, um, uh, A push and world history where they're a year long. And if you don't hit that three, nothing. Well, you know, that's a lot. So, you know, a huge advantage over AP and IB. Um, I will say uh, I, I threw out free the, the tuitions wave. There is a $50 uh, college access fee per semester and the students are responsible for their books and materials. So free tuition, just not everything's free, but you know those credits are gonna transfer. The other thing we've got are technical pathways. So we've had, we had a high school senior that did our cosmetology program. Um, she got released in the afternoon, was able to come participate, blah, blah, blah. By the time she graduated high school, she was old enough, she got her cosmetology license. She didn't even miss a beat. Graduated high school, went and started cutting hair. Um, we've got technical and aviation, welding, lots of those, um, those degree programs um, that we talked about on the gainful employment, where you, get, you know, come out with a living wage. So you can get a head start on that in high school. Um, and again, that can start as soon as your junior year. And we're doing a really good job of scheduling things like at our Cameron campus, which is way out 68. Like I said, Colfax, Oak Ridge area. You know, super convenient to Northern, Western, Northwest. And we're teaching those core classes that transfer easily back to the high school and are gonna be good for college credit. So we do that. We have the Greensboro campus is way out by um, uh, the other side of downtown. So it's convenient to, to schools on that side of Greensboro. Ragsdale's across the street, um, Southwest Infoir. So High Point, Central Andrews, you know, they can get to either here or um, the High Point campus pretty easy. So uh, great way to get a head start either on career aspirations or on uh, college transfer stuff. Definitely hit up Linda Whitlow. Um, expert, knows everything about it, works really well with all the high schools, all the, all the senior counselors have one career and college promise person that's really like dedicated to it. So if you're a rising sophomore, if you got a rising sophomore, this is the time of year you wanna be beating on that counselor to make sure that if you wanna do it, you can get in. Gotta have an unweighted 2.8 uh, to qualify. The technical ones, maybe a little less. Thank you. Nah, that was super fast. I had a lot of stuff. I'm sorry if that was too much, but I like working here. This is what I do. Um, one thing I just, you know, I didn't, this, this is not slide worthy. Well, it is slide worthy, but it's just something that people need to know about community college. We've got over 50 clubs and organizations. We've got basketball, volleyball, baseball. Um, we've got student leadership programs. Uh, we, I've got ambassadors that do my tours that get paid, stipend and a scholarship, um, work study. There's ways to work on campus and get paid while you're in school without taking out loans. Um, there's fun stuff to do. Our campus is beautiful. Uh, not right now, they've got a big mud pit in the middle because they're building a new park. But in six months, there's gonna be a new park in the middle of campus right outside my office. It's gonna be awesome. So community college, not harbored by the highway, um, lots of things to offer. We're right next door. Here's our digits. I'll put them in the chat as well. That's my real email address. Look at that. You can email me directly. I'm the director of admissions. It's right in the slideshow. My direct extension is 50125. So if you wanna to talk to me on the telephone, you can call 336-334-4822, extension 50125, and talk to me live, either here or in my kitchen. I get to work at home some.
Uh, that's all I got, folks. If if there's any questions, uh, hit those with now, uh, and I'll be sure to answer those. But if if not, boom! I'm four minutes early. All right. Uh, like Jesse said, if there are any questions, um, be sure to put those uh, questions in the chat. Uh, Jesse, he did an amazing job. I think Zai did a great job. Lots of great information. And I just thank everyone for, you know, joining us this evening. I just wanted to uh, ask my um, colleagues just do another sweep just to make sure we don't have anything in the chat that we need to address. So just make sure we just uh, do that. But uh, again, on behalf of all of our, you know, community partners, GTCC, Guilford Parent Academy, Guilford County Schools, uh, Say Yes, our college advisors, CFNC, we just thank you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, we have another amazing webinar that's going to be held on March 25th. So mark your calendar, 6 o'clock. Um, registration is open and it's going to help you understand your financial aid offer. So, uh, you know, of course, Jesse talked about how much college costs and you want to make sure you understand your offer from the financial aid office on how to pay for it. So that's coming up on March 25th at 6 p.m.